do good things come in small packages? Not sure. Today, we'll find out. What's up everybody, Sam here and welcome back to the Juice Box. In today's video, I'm going to be installing this. This is a solar charge controller. This little guy is super affordable and is going to help us continue working on our DIY super cheap solar installation to get a little bit of off-grid tech and power here in the Juice Box. So what I've got for you guys is the Bouge RV model P2430N solar charge controller. This has an output of 12 to 24 volts and a maximum current rating of 30 amps. This is a PWM negative grounded charge controller. While this is not big in the world of charge controllers, there are definitely really, really large ones out there. This guy is affordable. It is small, compact, and might be worth checking into if you're looking for a small setup or if you're like me, just getting things started to get components in place and get a little bit of off-grid energy flowing into your space. The overall charge controller is not very large. It does have some buttons on the front, an LCD display, and then you see four screw terminals at the bottom. Those correlate to the wire clamps on the bottom or underside of the controller and will connect your PV array positive and negative, your battery output positive and negative, and there's also a USB-A port for charging for USB devices. Flipping the charge controller around to the back, we are greeted with a giant heat sink. Pretty much the entire back cover is aluminum with that heat sink in place. This is gonna work great for dissipating the heat generated by the charge controlling procedures, but it also means this little guy is fanless, so it should be a silent charge controller. So there are a couple of things you wanna note and things to think about before you purchase your charge controller, especially if you already have existing components in place. First and foremost, make sure your charge controller can handle the same voltage as your battery bank. This is a 12 or 24 volt charge controller, which will allow me to either have a 12 volt battery bank or a 24 volt. That's it. I can't upgrade to a 36, 48, 60, 72, or anything higher than that. I'm stuck with 12 or 24 volts as far as my battery bank voltage with this unit. The other thing to consider is your solar array. What is your maximum open circuit voltage coming from your panels and what is the maximum amperage coming from your panels? For this guy, it's a 30 amp charge controller so it will only accept up to 30 amps of PV or solar input. Also, its open circuit voltage maximum is 55 volts. That's okay, I have a very small solar array and this is gonna be well within the range of the capacities of this guy without going overboard. Beyond that, other things you may wanna consider is that this is a PWM or pulse width modulation controller, which makes it more budget friendly. However, it is not as efficient as MPPT controllers or maximum PowerPoint tracking. Those definitely get a lot more juice and efficiencies out of your solar array, but they are also generally more expensive. But seeing as I'm building a small DIY setup just to get things rocking and rolling in the juice box, this little guy surely will do good. And if nothing else, I'm testing it out for anyone else who may be in a more strict budget, don't want to invest all of their money into solar, and might be curious how well this guy does. So with the charge controller, you get some small little crimp connections. They're basically blade terminals you can put on the end of your wires. And so what I'm doing is crimping them onto the end of the output from my PV disconnect box. This is a solar disconnect that we put in. I actually did a video before this one on the channel if you're curious about why to have one and how to use it. Basically, it's a way of disconnecting my solar array from inside so that I can do stuff like this without having to go out physically disconnect my solar array or be dangerous or question, is it really disconnected? This right here handles it all for me. I'm using just a set of wire crimpers, nothing super fancy with this kit as far as crimping the ends on. Sure, if you want to, get some flux core solder, get your shrink wrap and go to town. But for this guy, I mean, it's not that big of a charge controller. This will be sufficient. My wires have been crimped both with the blade connector that comes with the controller and with a ring terminal and heat shrink wrap to connect it to my battery. So I'm ready to connect the controller. Now here is the steps for this particular controller on how to wire it up. You want to connect the controller to your battery first, both your positive and your negative. Once the battery is fully connected to the controller, both your positive and negative, then you can connect your solar array wires positive and negative. Wow. 
this part right here holding the capacitor between my solar array wires honestly is pointless because I have my disconnect in place but I'm doing it just to be safe I would rather waste 10 15 seconds than waste a product or a controller fry out on me taking the user manual as reference I'm going to set my battery type in the charge controller before I turn on my solar array and start charging anything this one charge controller handles a wide variety of batteries sealed lead acid absorbed glass mat gel batteries flooded lead acid lithium iron phosphate ternary lithium batteries and lithium titanium oxide are all listed in here as battery compositions that this guy will handle all right so let's go ahead and wake up the lcd screen and let's press this button to go to the menu here is the battery option i'm going to press and hold this button to allow me to change it pressing this button once takes you through the various settings as i click it there are little battery icons and abbreviations so gel agm another gel flooded lead acid lfp is lithium iron phosphate and then the other two afterwards this is what i want battery option five so i'm going to press and hold this button to lock it into place press in the menu buttons more this tells me the battery type is 12 volts i can manually set this or allow it to automatically do it i'll leave it on automatic this is my battery charge voltage it's currently set to 14.6 which does match my battery manufacturer settings if I wanted to change this, press and hold the button on the left. Then I can scroll through different settings here and do whatever I would like. So and then press and hold to lock it into place. This next menu shows me the temperature of the controller inside and I can change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius the same way. Press and hold the left button, tap the right and then press and hold the right to lock it in. This screen is the solar panel input voltage. As we can see, it is zero volts because my disconnect is still on or in place. The next menu is the place for error codes. And then one more press takes you back to the home screen of the controller. All right, everything is set. We're ready to turn on our disconnect and actually start charging and bringing in energy from our solar panels. So I'm gonna flip my breaker up to turn this on. And now if we look, we have the solar panel icon. A little arrow is pointing towards the battery. It says I'm charging the battery. Now if I go through our menu again and go to this one right past the temperature, it tells me I'm currently bringing in around 32 volts from the solar array. If you'll notice, here's the battery voltage. This is the battery charge amps. It's at zero because according to the voltage, my battery is fully charged. hot diggity dog so everything is connected and as you guys see we have power coming from the solar panel to the disconnect to the charge controller to the battery to the power inverter and then over to the blue eddy power station here in juice box that is being charged up that's awesome i'm finally totally off grid to a small capacity here inside the juice box there you have it guys there is the install and video of the bouge rv 
30 amp charge controller. As you also got to see, we have our various other components in here and it's all gonna be chronicled here on the juice box. Whether you just dropped in on this video or you're watching that playlist and you're here right now, there's a link to it down below where you can see the next sequence of videos to show you how to set up your own off-grid system and at least learn about the individual components that goes into a lot of things as far as producing your own electricity. If you got any questions or comments, feel free to ask me down below. There's a link to that product and the other stuff you see on the channel down there as well. Otherwise, take care and I'll see you guys next time in the juice box.